Adam Christ from MyMMANews.com being joined by undefeated phenom Jackie Boonton. She is one half of the co-main event taking on Samilia Sundell in the inaugural Ones Women Strawweight Muay Thai Championship. It's going down in just a couple of days. I am fortunate enough to be and joined by my guest today, Jackie Boonton. It's our first time talking, but it's an absolute pleasure. How are we, Jackie? I'm doing fantastic. And again, thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure. Like I said, I'm a huge lover of Muay Thai, huge supporter of Muay Thai, and I love what One Championships is doing. So before we get into all that, I want to encapsulate just a couple of things. So not your typical career day situation, if, you know, if I'm not mistaken. It worked for you. You loved martial arts. Your brother-in-law introduces you to the sport. Obviously, you get to the grinding, and here you are about to make history. Like That's just such a story, such an encapsulating and a, not, and a fantastic story. How's it feel for you? Oh, man, <clears throat> you know, it feels surreal. It's like I've been doing this for so long and right. like you said, been doing the grind for so long and along with the grind comes, you know, your routine, your boring routine, but I love it. So sometimes I have to really sit back and think about where I started and how, where, you know, where I came from and how far I got from day one. So really, it's just a surreal feeling to, to be about to compete and like you said, make history in one championship. And talking about a little bit of your, your family lineage and everything, you were the first athlete to really embrace the sports characteristics of that side of the family. Has anybody else on your side of the family decided, you know what, maybe athletics does run in our family. I'm going to try this out myself. I mean, we got a champion in our genes here. As of lately, no. I mean, they definitely work out for, you know, fitness, health, but in terms of competition, no, not so much. I mean, we definitely, I'm... I have three older sisters, four girls total, so we're all very, you know, we're competitive, but none of them have taken that competitive side or, you know, competitive genes, or you say, to actual sports competition yet. <laughs> right. Now, speaking on the grind, you did it all with your coach, Brian Pop Popejoy, discussing giving it all to him. Like you said, I mean... In this sport, a lot of people, they transition from gym to gym. They get what they get, and then they move forward. And they it's a very selfish sport. But you, you've done it alongside your boy, Brian, and you guys have done so much together. And finally, again, I'm going to keep keep touching on it, making history. Can you talk about that journey together? Yeah, I've been with, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know, I've been with Brian yeah. since I started when I was 11. So it's been 13 years now, and I'm really, really grateful and just, lucky to have stumbled across boxing works and Brian and the fact that they're so close here in my hometown, you know, it's an insane thing to just be with the one of, if not the best coach in the U S for Muay Thai. I really do believe that not being biased <laughs> at all, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think it's, it's funny how life works out and just the fact that I've been consistent with great people in my corner in my life. That's definitely a huge part of my successes. And talking about that history of you and him and that loyalty, loyalty is something that, especially in combat sports or just sports in general, it doesn't, it's not a long lasting thing. Some people have it, some people don't, and I'm sure you know that, but you have it with Brian. Can you talk about what it's going to feel like pending the win, you giving that title to Coach Brian? I, oh man, it's, it brings up, I've thought about that, you know, so many times and it brings up a lot of emotions. I can't really describe it specifically. I just know it's, it's going to be a whole whirlwind of emotions. Just, it's not just, you know, me accepting this fight and having a two month camp. It's me walking into the gym as an 11 year old girl and having him ride with me ever since I was a kid up until, you know, I get the young adult I am now, just, it'll be a whirlwind of emotions. <laughs> He saw something in you at a young age. Do you feel like you owe it to him almost? Yeah, I mean, I, I know he, you know, I I definitely want to bring this win for him. And I it's not so much that I owe it to him. Mm -hmm. I think all of my successes, I want to make him proud. And I want to show him, you know, all the time and effort and belief he put into me. This is, it. you know, this is the only thing I could give back to you, really. Because wow. it's a two-way street. But, um. Yeah, you know, when I win this title, it, oh, it's definitely going to be for him as so much as it is for, you know, my family, myself, everyone. Of course. Now, I, like we said before we got rolling, I love what one's doing with Muay Thai because, like, like I said as well, Muay Thai is one of those combat sports that I truly feel like up until recently it hasn't gotten its, its due justice. And I say that with meaning, like, MMA 
hugely popular, obviously one fighting UFC, just MMA, it's really taken off. But all of the striking that MMA fans love, just take away the grappling, and that's Muay Thai, right? So it, I've always wondered why Muay Thai hasn't taken off, but here one is, and you're a part of this huge trajectory on the process. Can you talk about what that's going to be like? Not only is Muay Thai growing so so phenomenally fast lately, but alongside of one championships, the two-way segue street has to mean a lot for you being a part of that. Oh, definitely. It means a whole lot to me. You know, growing up, of course, there were female athletes and other Muay Thai fighters that I, I looked up to. And I never really looked at like organizations growing up, like, okay, this is where I want to be signed to. And I think most of that is because the organizations, especially here in the States, were kind of, you know, they're great organizations, but it just kind of seemed like that's about it. That's about all you can get to where it wasn't until really recently, like 2018, 2019, where I realized like, okay, one is really the place you want to be if you're just a purely a striker, even if you're doing MMA, like they're doing a phenomenal job on both, especially like you said, with the super series of Muay Thai and kickboxing. Like I really do feel like so many people now all over the world know what Muay Thai is and are fascinated to see it, especially on a a stage and production that one championship has. Absolutely. So I think, yeah, they're definitely opening many windows for the sport and athletes. I couldn't agree more. What they're doing on the production level for the athletes and bringing all of the combat sports, not just MMA, but everything. I mean, uh, Danielle Kelly, you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu superstar, she's making her fast rise up there. And with due justice, because she's so phenomenal grappling, and one, they're making her a part of their story. And Muay Thai, obviously, you're a part of their story. But fighting not only in the co-main event, but for the inaugural one championship, uh, like you said, 11 years old, it's a life's work in one night of history. That has to be hard to encapsulate in words, but can you try for me? <laughs> yeah I mean you hit it around the nail it's hard to encapsulate but I think it's it's an overwhelming feeling of mixed emotions it's a so much grat expressive of, of gratitude I have gratefulness you know excitement nerves like it's literally everything it's everything when I think about it and like but at the same time I try not to think about it in that way to not put so much pressure on myself but mm -hmm. I'm well aware of the magnitude this is and like it's been a dream of mine for so long so I'm ready to get it going I'm ready to to, to shock the world and show and prove to myself why I'm I know I'm world champion so well I don't you know you said shock the world I don't know if it's going to be so much as a shock because when you came in and absolutely blew the doors off like you did with Wonder Woman I think people now fully understand the capabilities that you bring to the table in this fight obviously it, I'm going to say it, it encapsulates the two main title contenders that belong in this title fight. So I, I don't think it's going to be that shocking as you might say, but Hey, uh, who am I to say? I'm just the fan that gets to talk to the fighters then, uh, <laughs> you know, what it, it is, what it is, but getting into the fight itself, we're not going to talk about all the, what it means and the, this, that, and the other, the fight itself, you've expressed Samilia has a careless type of style. How does your style fit to that and her facet of that style of fighting? So with, you know, with me saying uh, Samilla's careless style, it's she definitely has a Thai style, which is the fair tech style, which is, you know, the come forward type of fighter. Um, Thai style, really, just you come forward a lot. Um, yeah. But I think especially in her last fight, it, I saw all of that. The only main thing was like she sped up times four, as in like, you know, she's really coming at you. So, and I think with any type of person who's coming at you with that type of aggression, there's always going to be holes. There's always going to be mistakes um, available for them to make. And I definitely see them. My coach has seen them. So, and I think with me as a fighter, I, I really am confident. I have adaptability. I can adapt in a fight camp during the fight. And I think that's my main thing with this fight is just being able to adapt to that. And, you know, just doing what Jackie does in my normal style, but having little, a little adaptions as to that forward pressure. Do you think your adaptability is going to be a key factor in this fight? Obviously, think, you know, your striking is hands down amazing, but your adaptability, you think that's going to be a key factor? I think so. I think, you know, I've had three fights in one championship. Um, I think you guys kind of, the fans know my type of style, but dealing with this type of fighter who's giving a little bit more in terms of the aggression, I think you guys will definitely see my adaptability. 
I wanted to talk to you about how this fight plays out. As do you do you think about how it might play out with typical Thai gloves opposed to the MMA gloves? Her style, like you said, very come forward, very aggressive in your face, and you're going to be adaptive. I mean, let's just not going to say you're going to fight fire with fire. I'm not asking your game plan, but do you think do you like fighting with these gloves in this bout? I'll leave it at that. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> 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 enough know, at, said yeah at first it was definitely daunting like even when i was helping janet get helping janet train for her first debut fight and we both had no idea about mma gloves like i was like she is crazy like how is she gonna you know like this is so scary but it's different when you get practice with it when you actually get in the fights with it i definitely like fighting with them small gloves <laughs> <laughs> Now, one thing I wanted to talk about, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this just because it, it made a huge splash with one, and that's the Mixed Rules fight. Rod Tang, Muay Thai Phenom, obviously. Very similar to yourself, Muay Thai Phenom, you know, great, great guy. And then DJ, <laughs> would you ever be interested in that type of a mixed uh, fight is what I'm getting at. You know, I would, I'm sorry, my alarm keeps going. I wouldn't be opposed <laughs> to it, <laughs> but yeah, I've never trained any grappling, any ground game in my life, and I don't really... Ha you know, I don't really have an interest to. That's not me knocking the sport at all. It's just I just like striking. I mean, I'm definitely a fan of watching it. I think it's a cool little thing that they're doing, crossing both two different martial arts into one fight. That's definitely a really interesting thing because no one's doing it. I agree with you. So can I ask you if you would be bold enough to predict a round? How do you get the win in this fight? Do you think it's going to be a stoppage? You're just going to go all the rounds. How do you win the one championship title? You know, I never like to give predictions. Um, it's not like a superstitious thing. I just don't. But I'm confident, like you said, you guys are going to see me being very adaptable, but at the same time sticking to my game plan and not letting, not folding under her game plan, not folding into her pressure. And like I said previously, Liam, this, it's going to be a life's work. But then after this, after pending, capturing the gold, the target's going to be on your back. Are you ready for that? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely ready for that. You know, that's taking this, this lifestyle and embracing this grind, especially this specific fight. Like I'm well aware of that and I want it. I'm ready. 